Star and one of those. So, so you, you can you can find and if you're doing for Japanese RPGs, just go to Japanese sites and use Google Translate. You'll get enough out of it. One more, and then I got to keep going. Yeah, I did the commercial like auditions and all that. How does voice acting on this little bit of a character? Like your name, your name. No, it's all your voice. It's all voice. They give you a script. They give you a script. You play the character. And sometimes you get a little direction, but most of the time not. Yeah, most of the time you're doing it at home. That's the big difference between uh, this kind of auditioning, is the auditioning for voiceovers has moved home. You don't go in for them anymore. You have to have a rig at home, you have to have a microphone, they send you the scripts, you record them at home, you send them in. That's how you do it. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> it sucks, because I, I don't do, I, I, my bookings averages went way down when I started having it. I, I like being directed. I, 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 being directed is a, is, is a good thing. I'm partly I'm not a director, but but um, but I like. But you have to learn how to direct yourself, essentially. Yeah, yeah, but I'm kind of the same way. So, but while you're doing it, you know, once you're prepared and you do all that stuff, have, be a positive attitude. Whatever you have to do, if you have a negative attitude, walk away, come back. Get yourself positive, come back. So you're in a positive place. You want to be professional. That means you don't want to. You want to make sure that you're. Your, your, uh, your submission is named correctly. Every place that sends you a, a, an email with, a, with, a, with an audition has a specific way they want you to name your file when you send it back. If you miss that, they're not even gonna listen to you, okay? Um, make, sure, yeah. uh, uh, make sure you read the whole audition submission before you do it so you make sure you're, you're doing it correctly. Um, that's what I mean by being professional. Make sure you get it in early, not late, not right on time. You get in early. Uh, be flexible. If they send it back to you, said, listen, this is great, but can you read it this way? Do it. Read it a different Even if you disagree wholeheartedly, you're, you know, the whole idea that as actors, we're artists in control of what we do, that's a big fallacy. We have to do what we're told. People pay us a lot of money to do what we're, what we're told. <laughs> okay? So, uh, and, well, voice actors, I'm talking about actors in general. Voice actors don't get paid a lot of money. <laughs> Um, but anyway, be flexible when you're giving when you're giving changes in auditions and stuff like that. You want to you want to you want to move around. You want also want to understand that they never audition all characters. They're going to send out auditions for five or six of the principals. And just because you're not right for one of those, because you're going to read this way, I'm not right for any of these guys. Find the one you're closest to be right for and send it in anyway. Because off of those, they cast everybody else. So you may not be right for this one, but hey, you sound perfect for Hector over here. You know, and now and now you're in the show anyway, even though you're not one of the maids. So um, you, you'll send it in, send something in, and send your best, and then forget about it, because you're not going to get a phone call <laughs> until until the day you do. <laughs> okay. right. Don't hold back. Don't hold back anything. Leave it all there. I know if you feel that you need a heavy dramatic moment, give it. That doesn't mean yell and scream and slobber all over the all over the microphone. You still have to give a professional performance that, that works for the character. But you want to you want to make sure you give it all you got. You don't want to walk away going God. If I'd only gotten angrier, if I'd only let go a little bit, if I had only is a terrible way to end the day of an audition. You know, uh, I, I would almost rather have you go, I wish I hadn't. That's, that's actually much more positive because if you're not failing once in a while, you're not doing this right. You're not stretching yourself. You're not taking yourself to the next place. You have to be stretching. And to do that, you have to be ready to fail from time to time. But if you're going to fail in this town, fail spectacularly. Okay, with, with, with fireworks and, and Twizzlers, you know? You just want to feel big. Um, and but, and have, when you're auditioning, have fun. Enjoy yourself. First of all, if you're not having fun doing this, why are you doing it? This is too hard. Unless you, unless you really love this, this is too hard a job to be involved in. I, I'm not fit for anything else, that's why I do this. But, but it, you know, you, you need to have fun with this. And so if that fun comes out, comes out of your character, it comes out of your read, and it comes out of your attitude. And people want to work with people that are fun. They just do. So it, it, it helps in a lot of different ways. Is there? Oh, we'll do that later. All right, so, um, any, no, more questions now. I'm going to take a couple quick questions, and then we're going to get to this. Oh, one. Yes. Dr. Gupta. There's a vocal doctor in town called Dr. Gupta. Okay. She's fantastic. She's a miracle worker. If you have actual scar tissue, you're going to need surgery. Yeah. And you need to go to the vascular if you yeah. want to do this for a little
Yeah, those of you who have children, when you have kids, they get young teenagers and you have vocal coaches that are trying to make them belt. That's that's what that that's what that comes. My daughter had the same issue. She had to have surgery. Yes. Uh, favorite character you have in Favorite character I have three. <laughs> um, I, I uh, uh, Rick Hunter from Robotech because it was my first. Nice. Robotech. That's so cool. <laughs> um, uh, Harry from Gungrave. He's the first villain I ever played. Of course, Luban the Third. Yeah. Uh, just goes on and on. Yes? Um, they usually restrict you to, to up to no more than three. Um, I generally will send three of allowed uh, if I have three different tanks in. Sometimes I have two, and that's all I got. You know, I can't if I can't improve on it. I'm just going to send what I got. But generally, no more than. And they better be different. Don't get to send three of the same. That's, that's, yeah. No, they'll give that when you're invited to audition. You have to be invited to audition. Okay. Um, they will send you a, a, an email with a description, with, a, with all of the, the details of when you have to send it in, how to name everything, uh, you know, when, the, when the job works. Uh, all of that stuff is in one page. On the next page, they'll have a picture of the character, hopefully, uh, a brief description, and the five or six lines of dialogue. And uh, the lines of dialogue are generally designed to show different emotional aspects of the character. Sometimes there'll be a scene, but if they're kind of disconnected, that's usually for video games, if they're kind of disconnected, they give a different emotion on each line, because that's what they're looking for. <laughs> no problem. And we're doing a, uh, what is this? Um, how to audition. You know, it's where all, this is all a part of Adventures Voice Acting, so the, the Anime LA was lovely enough to give us a booth and it, in exchange for us to do a bunch of programming here. So, um, so thank you, Anime LA. <laughs> so, the how to audition is tomorrow night at 9, at 8 p.m. Just be looking for it. So we're doing a how to audition count. I think it's probably in here, or it's in one of these rooms here. It's gonna be me and Laura Stahl and a couple other people. And we're going to go through, we're going to go through, we have audition we'll copy, people come up and do mock auditions and stuff like that. So we're going to play a little. Play some fun. I, it's going to, I'm sure it's over here. I'm, I'm positive it's over here. So, um, any more questions? How do I, it's Adventures Voice Acting presents How to Audition, I think it's the way it's listed. Tomorrow night, 8 o'clock. Empire Ballroom 3. Empire Ballroom 3, wherever the hell that is. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's get to this next part. So what I, I what, yes, go ahead. No, no, sorry. One more. Oh, you want you want to react? Okay. Um, I've got scripts here. These are these are okay. Give me a moment. I will ask you for what I need. Oh my goodness. All right, so I'm dropping shit now. All right, so these are the books that we use for uh, level B classes. We have three classes, three levels, intro, level A, level B. These are the hardest stuff that we've done. Um, so I'm gonna pick some scenes out, I'm gonna grab some people, and we're gonna play a little bit, give you a little direction, and uh, just see what we can do, okay? So if I call you up here, and there's a bunch of scripts, we got a lot of time, so, so relax. <laughs> okay, um, um, uh, you, uh, we'll grab one of these microphones, and then I'll give you a little bit of a rundown of what it is. Give me just a second, just, just drop something here. So bad at it. It's so much fun. Foley's doing all the footsteps. Yeah, so I think I was a dancer at one time when I was skinny. I was a dancer at one time. I should be able to do this. Let me come down there. Okay, so, 
This is a scene from uh, Lagrange, Flower of. I forgot how it's pronounced. What? Thank you. Brenda, I didn't work on that show. <laughs> so, this is a scene between two characters, uh, 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 Madoka and Hoginami. Um, I want you to play Hoginami. Okay. Be with you in just a second. So, Madoka is a, is, a, is a pilot, and she kind of ended up piloting their ship or whatever in this in a weird place and now they can't find any they can't find where they are and she's walking around looking and encounters this very voluptuous blonde breasty short skirted woman who comes off very dumb but she's not <laughs> she's not dumb at all um, and so you're trying to find out what's going on and she's kind of taking over and you don't really realize until the end okay, okay? Muginabe, she comes off as dumb as she can, kind of dumb blondie, mm -hmm. but it's all part of her manipulation. Okay. Okay? So let's see what happens. Okay. In three, two, one. Excuse me, but I'm afraid I'm kind of... I'm afraid. I'm kind of lost. You too? You too? Um, forgive me, but have we met? Well, I'm the pilot who, uh... I mean, I'm Madoka Kiono, and you are? Migana Miginami. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Muginami. Uh, Muginami. Muginami. Miss Muginami, I. Uh, Roger that. I'll go. I'll go this way and see what I can find, and you go that way. Yeah, sure. Wait, hold on a sec. What am I doing? All right, good. That was it. They're all one thing. <laughs> Okay, let's go again. Let me give you a little direction. Okay. Um, with Muginami, um, why don't you put a big smile on your face? She lives in the clouds. Okay. So, so put yourself in the clouds, okay? And at that last part where she says, Roger that, she's taking over at that moment. Okay. Roger that, I'm going to go this way. It's oh. part of that, that okay. you're taking it over, which leaves you baffled. Okay. Which is what your last line is. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute, I'm following. What? You don't even know who this person is, you're following directions. Okay. At the beginning, also, you're a little embarrassed about why, which is why you start saying you're the pilot and then back off. Oh, okay. Because you're embarrassed that you crashed in that place. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Notice that it was all emotional, except for the one little bit of, of the smile thing, but it was all emotional direction. When you direct yourself, you want to direct emotionally, not, not physically. Excuse me, but I'm afraid I'm kind of... I'm kind of lost. Uh, uh, you too? Uh, can I redo that, please? Yeah, let's try to work. Okay. I'm afraid I'm kind of lost. You too? You? Uh, um, forgive me, but have we met? Well, I'm the pilot who... Uh, I mean, I'm Madoka Kiono. And you are? Muginami. Miss Muginami, I... Brad, you that? I'll go this way and see what I can find. And you go up that way. Yeah, sure. Wait. Hold on a sec. What am I doing? Nice. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Otherwise, I will wrap it around you accidentally. So it's great to see how just a little bit of emotional changes make a big difference in the outcome. So now I need two guys. The guy, yeah, uh, you. Oh, <laughs> All right, uh, so we're gonna do. This is for Fake Zero. Yeah! Okay? Yep. So um, I'll go ahead and take that. So I want you to play Waver, and you're gonna play Ryder. So let me talk about Waver really quickly. Waver is the Harry Potter of the thieves. Okay. He was he went to May school. I mean literally. <laughs> he went to May school. He was put down because his family was not was not uh, deep in mages, um, and he ended up stealing uh, inadvertently his professor's relic and summoning a heroic spirit from the past, and suddenly finds himself in the middle of a Grail war, looking for the Holy Grail. And the person that you summoned, and by the way, you were insecure. You're kind of a little guy. I mean, literally, he looks like Harry Potter without the glasses. <laughs> he doesn't have a scar. And, um, and you're intimidated by this guy because he's twice your size. He's big, he's bolsterous, but he's supposed to be working for you. So you're afraid of him and you're angry with him all at the same time. 
And in this scene here, when we get to the bottom, this is where his real heart is. This is what he really wants. So that's coming from the gut. Okay? You are rider. Rider is a designation. There are, there are sabers, lancers, riders. Rider is somebody who rides horses. He has actually a big carriage. And, and, and who he was, who Ryder was in his original life was Alexander the Great. So he's big. He has big dreams of, of, of taking over the world and he, and he lives large. And he's trying to find out if this kid over here wants to take over the world too because then you can't be his servant. Otherwise you're going to be. But you scare the crap out of him while you're doing it. So live large, okay? Alright, so here we go. In three, two, one. What will you do with the grill once you possess it? What? Why? What is it that you want? What? Why? What's it to you what I do? I mean, what do you care? If you're also intent on world conquest, then that would make you my enemy. Because the world cannot serve two lords. What? No, I don't want that. Look, I'll tell you what I really want. I just want people to treat me fairly. I want to make all those idiots back at the clock tower who never even bothered to give me a chance to admit it to me that they were wrong. Small! Uh, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. We'll, we'll stop there. Good. Excellent. Excellent. You're right on my track, actually. Huh. Two things he's screwing up. Actually, you're doing really good. <laughs> here's, what I want you, here's what I want you to do. When we get to here, when we get to this part, think about something in your life that you want more than anything. That you want more than anything. That's what you're talking about. Feel that when you say it. Okay? That's all you gotta do. And you're great, just keep going. Get bigger, get bigger, get larger, larger. All right. Here we go. In three, two, one. What will you do with the grill once you possess it? What? Why? What's it to you what I do? I mean, what do you care? If you're also intent on world conquest, then that would make you my enemy. Because the world cannot serve two lords. What? No, I don't want that. Look, I'll tell you what I really want. I just want people to treat me fairly. I want to make all those idiots back at the clock tower who never bothered to give me a chance to admit to me that they were wrong. Small! Nice, well, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> we, we, ran out, we ran out of room on the, on the page, but the line is small and short-sighted and stupid. <laughs> Yeah, that's why it's written in there. <laughs> Small and narrow-minded and stupid. Yeah, there. So give me, give a big hand. <laughs> focusing on wants, desires. It's called it in acting terms. It's called intention. When you focus on the intention of the character, the line you read is almost always going to come out better than if you're focused on what they're, what the actual facts they're saying, rather than what they intend to come out of. So you always want to be playing the intention of the character. Okay. So I need a guy and a girl. Here's a guy. And going on is uh, you're playing uh, uh, Hikari and you're playing Monica. Um, this is a, a story about uh, uh, two groups of humans. One lives on the shore and one lives underwater. One is able to live underwater. And, and they literally can live underwater, breathe water, that sort of stuff. And so, um, and these two come from different worlds and they, because, uh, because of, a, of an environmental event that forced all the people underwater to, to go into hibernation, uh, they were thrown together because one of them got left behind. So now it's time to bring these guys out of hibernation, and you've been chosen to carry the torch and, and to give it, okay? But what just happened is you just confessed your love to her. <laughs> right as we started, that just happened right before that. And this is how you feel the same. You were about to break up because your, the guy you love is about to come up from under the water. Okay, and so you were about to tell him that, but now he's just confessed the love and you don't want to, you don't want to impose on him, right? He's gonna do something special. So it's a very, it's that tension. So she's a little kind of upset, almost crying, but towards the end of that, okay? Yes, please grab a mic so they can hear you. Oh, was it on? My shorts? Just be on. Just don't get close. Okay, the, these, you have to get close. Don't ever blow into a mic. Don't ever blow into a mic. Sorry. Tap if you have to. <laughs> 
All right, here we go. In three, two, one. You, but, uh, sorry, I start over. Yeah, don't ask, just start over. Um, <laughs> sorry, I was, I'm just trying to get to character. Even if you don't feel the same, the, even though... You know what you want to do? Think, think about the person in your life you love. Yeah. And think about that, just feel that feeling. Just, sorry, and say those lines. Right just say, just say those lines. Don't think about the lines, just feel that feeling and just say it without it. Here we go. Even if you don't feel the same, the fact is I love you. The fact is the love that I feel for you won't change. I can't help it. You're precious to me, Manaka. And always will be. <laughs> so, what would you say to me? Kind of interrupted you before. I'll tell you later, after the Ofuna Hiki. Huh? Hiki, wave the flag high. So everyone could see it, and no one gets lost. Don't stop waving it. So everyone can see it. No one gets lost. Don't stop waving it. I won't. All right, good, good. No, 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 no. When, when, look, when I do, when I, because I also direct American cartoons, and and when we do live, you know, I have a group of eight people, nine people in the room, and the first take we do is just to kind of get acquainted with the words. We never use it, <laughs> and so that's what this is. That's why I always do it two reads. So you get a little acquainted with it. And now we're going to do it again, okay? okay. So I want you to, to try to force a smile. She's trying to smile for him, even though she feels she's torn apart, okay? okay. And you here, you just finished giving the thing, yeah. and she's not really giving you the reaction you thought she was going to. Right. She's kind of crying and backing away from you at the time, okay? As she's leaving up the stairs to go back up to the surface, which is weird. They walk. They can swim, but they walk. It's a weird show. All right, here we go. Here we go. Three, two, one. Even if you don't feel the same, the fact that the fact that I love you won't change. I can't help it. You're precious to me, and always will be. So, what were you gonna say to me? Can I answer you before? I'll tell you later, after the whole food name, Hiki. Huh? Hiki. Wave the flag high. Oh. So everyone can see it. And no one gets lost. Don't stop waving it. Once. Nice, really good. <laughs> My other critique for you? Be louder. <laughs> That's the big thing. Um, one of the things that happens when we're doing these parts, especially when we're doing drama, is uh, sometimes you know it's it's appropriate to get quiet and you get kind of internal and all this stuff. But we still got to hear you. So you still have to learn how to project while being quiet. It's it's and it's all that's all a breath thing, but it's also uh, an acting thing. You got to detach volume from feeling. Because what people will do is they're feeling more excited, they get louder, they feel sad, they get quiet. So you need to go sad and stay loud. That sort of thing, okay? All right, um, give me a second here. She's just a big ball of rage. She's just angry. She loves kicking ass. She loves beating people up. And she's uh, undercover at the school trying to find out who killed her father. Um, um, uh, Senkets is the piece of sentient clothing she is wearing. So she's actually wearing you. There's a big eye on her shoulder. 
And you two have to work together. You as a, as a, as a sentient AI suit give her power and stuff like that, but only if you can work together. You take a little bit of her blood mm -hmm. to power you, but you guys are out of sync, and this is, and you're getting very annoyed with her, and you are just in havoc. So you're just yelling at him, and you're pissed, and look at the... Okay, we're good. <laughs> so, is there kids in here? <laughs> but there's just one line in this that, uh, that, uh, that's not appropriate. <laughs> the picture's even less appropriate. <laughs> I look 12, but I'm 19, so it's fine. All right, so, uh, so lots of rage, okay? All right, here we go. In three, two, one. This is bad. If you lose any more blood, you'll pass out in five minutes. Then stop drinking so much of my blood. And talk about something else for a change. I cannot be warned by you unless I drink your blood. Yeah, I know that. When you wear me and I'm warned by you, that is when the power manifests. Oh, but, you, but you have to yet truly wear me. I'm wearing you right now, aren't I? You're guzzling my blood and I'm dying of embarrassment. I look like a hoe. Calm down. That just costs you 15 seconds. So, uh... Okay, so a couple things. First of all, yeah, that was great. <laughs> First of all, uh, let's talk about Senkids. Senkids is right here. You're right next to it, so you don't need to shout. So one of the things that one of the things that I love is one of my philosophies in, in teaching is that there's nothing stronger than a big emotion held back. So I can be angry, or I can be angry. Which one's more powerful? Okay. So take that, pull it in. All right. And she's right here. So just talk like this. To her. You have the opposite. Yell at her. And don't correct the grammar. It's ain't. There's an eight in there. Uh, Make an eight. <laughs> and what she's wearing is barely a G-string and two little strips over one strip over each nipple. And that's it. Okay? So that's why she feels she looks like a hoe. And she actually snaps the nipple. It's really weird. Anyway. Uh, Alright, so here we go. In three, two, one. This is bad. If you lose any more blood, you'll pass out in five minutes. Then stop drinking so much of my blood. And let's talk about something else for a change. I cannot be warned by you unless I drink your blood. Yeah, I know that. When you wear me, when you wear me and I'm warned by you, that is when the power manifests. But you have yet to truly wear me. I'm wearing you right now, ain't I? You're guzzling my blood and I'm dying of embarrassment. I look like a hoe. Calm down. That just cost you 15 seconds. All right, cool. <laughs> so one of the questions that usually comes up after I do this one is, why do you have trouble with that kind of language and that kind of stuff? And the fact is, is that you, is that a lot of people do. And we all set our own boundaries. We all set our own lines. There's a lady I'm going to be interviewing tomorrow on conversations called, thank you, uh, on conversations called Julie Cleaver. Uh, Julie's been around since I have. We started the same show, uh, but she, she's very devout. Uh, and so she has a line. There's certain kinds of shows she will not do. She's very nice about it. There's no judgment about it. It's just her line. And so you could, you're, it's okay to set your own limits uh, in this business. In fact, it's almost necessary for you too, especially if you're female. I'm sorry to say this. It sounds very sexist, but Me Too is very real, and you got to be careful, and you got to be aware of it. So um, yeah, it just is. So uh, yeah, it's awful. Uh, someday, someday. <laughs> I just, uh, I, was, I was invited into those circles early in my career, and I chose not to, uh, to play, and I'm very happy that I did now. <laughs> it just, I just thought of what, what it would be to, oh, somebody's, I had a daughter, you know, so, I, um, so that's another thing, if you're, if it's, any of you auditioning, um, if it seems weird, don't do it, if it seems scary, don't do it, if you have to ask someone, should I do it, don't do it. Um, I had a, a friend call, uh, from, I know from back east, and said he was invited, she was invited out by a, by a voice actor to come do some study. And I, I don't know this voice actor well enough to give her advice, but the fact that she had to ask, I, I said, don't do it. You don't, you don't know what you're getting into. She's, she's a model. She's one of those people, you know, so. Um, so, uh, and I even, even I, back in my 20s, even I got me too. So, but, uh, but being a man, I didn't mess with my career like it does with some women. So that's, that's a big difference in what I experienced and what other people experienced. But it's but it's it's quite prevalent, unfortunately. It's getting better, but it's but it's still there. So please be careful. I have about five minutes for questions. So any more questions you guys have? Yes. What is like the most kind of obscure, like useful thing you recommend people that you wouldn't hear anywhere else? Like not the best thing. 
Something really good. Oh, God. I don't know. Um, I've been saying the same tips over and over again for so long, I think everybody repeats me. Um, <laughs> Sometimes it's helpful to take the actor, so that you're doing this on your own, but for me as a director, take the actor away from the scene and take, put them in another kind of space to make that scene work. So when you're having trouble finding a character, one of the things that I might do is give myself a direction like, my dog just died, to get that sense of, that particular flavor of upset and sadness. So one of the things that you can do too as an actor working at home is give yourself directions like that. Instead of trying to think your way through this part, if you're struggling with it, set yourself a context that you can act through and act out of that context rather than out of those words. And that's one of the ways to do it. Yeah? Any kind of story? Yeah, let me, let me get some people out here. Yes. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, okay. So what if you have a sense of memory, like you're trying to get like an emotion, but you don't have that, to, you don't have that connection with that character, like what would you do? Well, you don't need a sense of memory. You've experienced everything in your life you need to experience in order to play a character. You just have to find it. It's there, okay? Um, the problem with sense memory acting is you're, it's acting from here. You're trying to remember something and then act out of that. But you're acting out of your brain here. You need to act from your emotion. So the thing to do is to find out, for instance, what is, one of the questions I ask an actor who's struggling is, when you feel anger, where in your body do you feel it? Right here, okay. So if you want to feel angry, you don't need to sense memory. You remember what that feels like, put yourself in that physical feeling. Your body, your brain will take you to anger. Okay? And you let and you let the physicality send you there. So you're not thinking about it, you're feeling your way through it. The minute you're thinking, it's over. <laughs> so, so if I want to feel sad, I just listen to shelter and then... Yeah, okay, whatever. Or, find, or, or physically feel the sadness there. Him and then you, yes. What are some tips if you are trying to play, let's say, a younger character, but they have an accent as well. Well, you, you better just do the accent. <laughs> Look, play the character first. Whatever you do, play the character first. Okay. And then you add the accents and all the, all the stuff on top of that. But you have to get the emotional aspect of the character first, and none of it works. So what may happen is, you may get the emotional nature of the character, but you can't get the accent, and the director will go, fuck it, we won't do the accent. Okay? That happens. Not often, but it does. So, so you need to, but worry about the character could come from here. The dialect is something that you have to learn today so that you can do it a year from now. That, that you can't learn that overnight. You gotta, if you want to do dialect, start learning now. Find a good book, find a good teacher. Okay, yes? What are some like diets, do's and don'ts for a voice? Who? Diet? Diets, yeah. Like, what the boy wants to take? Oh, I don't know. Don't get fat like me. <laughs> uh, no, we're, no, I'm serious. I'm serious. Work out. Work out. The more physically fit you are, the better voice actor you'll be. Uh, you just, you just will what? Core strength. Uh, 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 yoga tends to work best. Actually, yoga is great for for because uh, it's core strength. It works on central balance, and it's uh, there's a spiritual component to it, which is always which is helpful for a lot of people. Don't drink milk. Yeah. Uh, 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 What's that? I try to avoid sugar at all costs. Well, that's that's you can you can you can do all that. I, avoid sugar. Don't avoid sugar. None of that affects the voice. The only thing that affects your voice in terms of what you can eat or don't eat, in the, and that's in the moment is smoking, will hurt your voice. Um, uh, coffee uh, dries out your throat and dries out your mouth and makes you noisy and also makes it hard to hydrate. And milk, but milk right before you work because it creates mucus and some people have a tough time to handle that. I actually don't have a problem with that. In fact, Steve Staley is amazing. I, I, I did a musical with Steve and we were backstage and he's eating this big ice cream and his song comes on, he puts the ice cream down, he goes out, sings it, Perfectly. He goes back, picks up the ice cream, and keeps eating. <laughs> How do you do that? I can't do that. Yes? How effective is biting into an apple? Biting into an apple has to do with getting rid of the clicks in your mouth. So what it does, the, the reason is the acidity of the apple breaks up the mucus membranes and makes your mouth a little cleaner. Um, and so that's what it's for, and it's very effective for most people. For me, it's not. It makes me salivate more and actually makes me sound worse. Exactly. So it's some, not everybody can do that. Yeah. Yes? No. 
I mean, there are, but I, I, don't, I don't know where to send you. There, I, 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 I just search for a, a day just to get scripts for a class I'm teaching. Yeah, like so there, but look for, look for a thing called, for, there's no ADR scripts out there at all. You have to take a class for that. Uh, but there are, you go, uh, Google for cartoon scripts for auditions, like that. Uh, you might Google, um, there was another one, uh, uh, two person scripts. One person scripts and two person scripts. I actually Googled those names and I got a couple of resources where there were scripts for that. Um, or, if you're looking for stuff for a demo, watch TV, record it, find a senior life, transcribe it. You gotta do the work. <laughs> yes? So, um, I've been lots of like, auditions, whatever, voice stuff, uh, but like, how, how, what's a good tip? So sometimes when you get nervous, I can know the lines like that, but I read it too quickly. Slow down. <laughs> Look, when you first, this is a comment, when this, most people when they first start, they're, they're going way too fast. Yeah. And it's because the adrenaline, the nerves, all that is there. So when you first get started, you should be reading at about two-thirds speed. So what it sounds like about two-thirds speed to you is going to sound normal to me. If you're tripping over a word, you're going too fast. Then look, there's a couple of, there's three lines of sync. You have to sync up three different aspects of this. You have your brain, which is reading the stuff. You have your mouth, which is expressing it. And you have the audience, which is listening. All three of those have to sync to make it work. If you're talking too fast for your brain, you're going to trip over the words. If you don't trip over the words, you're talking too fast for the audience, they're not going to follow you, you're going to lose them. So you've got to slow it down so everybody can work, everybody can get it. Okay. Yes? Okay, do you mind if I add something? What's that? It's that for me, but uh, one thing that helps uh, worse wonders is just, uh, just read the like at least. Thank you for bringing that up. Thank you, because I meant to say that earlier. He's absolutely right. Um, cold reading is amazing. Yes. It's everything. Yes. Cold reading is everything in this business. All of your auditions are cold reads. Anytime you go into one, anytime you go into work, they're going to give you a part, but they're also going to give you four other parts to play, and those are all cold reads. Cold reading is huge. You need to. The better you can cold read, the more you're going to book work. Bottom line. What is cold reading? Sorry. Pick it up. I've never read it before. Act. Oh. Okay. Nice. Okay, so you want to, if you can't do that, take a cold reading class. There are, there are, there are those out there, all right? Read a book. Read a book. But the exercise he's talking about, and you do this in that, that same position, that breathing position that we said earlier, do it in the breathing position. You do find a book or a, a book or a magazine, not a newspaper, because newspapers are hard to read and the grammar sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you want to find a, a newspaper and then read it. Read for 10 minutes, just a part you haven't read, and read it out loud. You're going to trip and stumble over the words. You're going to be frustrated. Your family's going to tell you to shut up. You know, um, but, but do it. Uh, 10 minutes a day to 20 minutes a day, and it will improve your reading tenfold. This was given to me by, by the, 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 I took a class from the voice of CBS in the 70s, a guy named Art Hand. He said, Tony, you, you sound very glib, but you sound a little bit like you're reading. And he gave me this, this, this thing that was godsend. It was a godsend. It was great. So, uh, yes. Stamina meaning your vocal stamina? Yeah, yeah. Singing. Singing. Singing properly. <laughs> With your correct breathing, because it forces you, it puts everything in place and it, it works out your throat in a way you can when you're talking. Okay? Yes. You know, you know I've, been taking, I've been taking a couple of classes, and uh, in those classes I've learned that it's, it all, it, some of it has to do with like how, how you control the ribcage as well and how you, and how you, and how you slow down the, and slow down the rate of which the, the, Back yeah, that's an awful lot of stuff to think about, though. Your best bet: tighten your core. Just tighten your core down. That gives that gives plenty of pressure. Yes. Absolutely. I use uh, I use Peter Piper and Lily Lolly. Uh, but the thing is, when you're doing it, you want to work it out so that you work your your tongue twisters so you can go as fast as you can without dropping anything. So. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers, a peck of pickle peppers, Peter Piper picked a Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers, where's the peck of pickle peppers, Peter Piper picked. So I got every consonant in there. That takes practice. I practice that, okay? So but so that's what you want to get that that's what that's what's gonna do you the best. And I, I use that for warm-up as well. Yes. Do you ever improvise scripts and say something like better? No. No. Your your job is to is to read the script that's in front of you. And if the, and if you start improvising off that uh, more than once, then you're gonna get fired. Um, by the time you get, especially when you do video games, by the time you get the script, it's gone through seven layers of lawyers <laughs> and approvals, and you're, you're just not the guy to fix it. You can change a word occasionally, but the director has to okay that. And even with the, like, I, I direct Lego Friends, 
and I and, and I have the writers in the room, and before I change something, I gotta get the I gotta get the producer's approval, even if I want to rechange it, even though I have the writers in the room. So, yes. Well, thanks. Well, thank you. I, I, I didn't get here by myself. I, I had help. I, I, I was uh, I, 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 I was given a chance by a producer who, who was willing to, to try someone on try. I had exactly one voice job when I got Robotech up to that point. So it was, uh, and, and so I had that, and then somebody from that production recommended me for another production, which is how I got my, my, my union card. And then those people who introduced me to somebody else, I mean, so I've had help all the way along the way. So yeah, it's kind of part of it, yeah. What do you love most about voice acting? And that could have been the what I love about voice acting is it's acting. I get paid to act. I get paid to be creative. I'm one of the luckiest guys in the world because I make my living this way. I don't have to do it. I don't have a day job. This is my day job. Um, so that's what I love most about it. It's, it's forever changing. It's different every day. Um, what I don't love about it is like two weeks ago when I was out of work for two weeks. It happens. You know? So, um, so that's, that's, that's what I like the most about it. And the, and the community. The voice acting community is wonderful. Unlike the rest of the community. <laughs> uh, are we almost there? Yeah, here, uh... yeah I will. Just one, one quick second. Two more questions and I will do that. Yes. Okay, so, so let's say, let's say you speak another language. If you manage to make it in the voice acting somehow, and like with the, dubbing anime in English, it, would, you be, would, it, would that lead you to dub, dubbing in, the, in any other languages? It can. It can if you speak fluently and naturally. You also have to have the right accent. Uh, about four years ago, I did a, a, a Christian series called Yesido, where I played uh, uh, I played Jesus basically as a bird, and, uh, and then I also played one of the Christian men. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a Saturday Night Live bit. You remember that, I think. <laughs> but um, um, and I just got a phone call uh, to they're doing in Spanish. Would I be wanting to reprise my role in Spanish? And I speak Spanish. I'm actually I'm Puerto Rican. I actually spoke Spanish first, um, but I have a very Caribbean accent. And it's very Puerto Rican. And I said that to them, and it's been crickets since. <laughs> they don't want me. <laughs> you need to sound like you're from Colombia. There's a specific, there's a specific dialect of Spanish that you need to speak in order to do that. But yeah, yeah. In fact, I have a student right now that I'm trying to encourage to do exactly that. He's from Peru. He speaks, he speaks fluently. He's trying to break into the American side, but he should be doing it on the Spanish side too. You, you can go for another like, five All right. Well, actually, I'm supposed to finish at 4:30. That's why I was still going. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they, they put up their own. Did they? Yeah. Well, right, up here. We've got some workshops coming. Let me do my commercials right now, and then I'll answer another question. We have some workshops coming. I think the ones on the internet may be sold out already, but the ones on in February are not. And, um, and uh, these are the intro voice acting and the level A and level B voice acting. Um, uh, the intro is really a basic, basic, basic intro. For people who have no experience, who are just dabbling, they just want to find out what it is. It's a little cheaper class, it's a little shorter class. And it's really kind of giving you a little flavor of the whole thing. Level A is when we really kind of get into it. I teach dubbing, teach you how to dub anime. And uh, we get into that and, and, and some of the physical tools that you have for character creation, that sort of thing. The level B class is all about auditioning, video games, prelay animation, which is how American animation is done. And then in each of these classes, we have at least four hours of practice. So, and we also have workouts coming up, which I didn't have room to put on there, but those come monthly. Yes. There, no, it's not. Sorry. Wow. I just looked at 28th and put 30th. No, it's March 1st. <laughs> I, so, I did that this morning. I'm asleep. <laughs> so, uh, you had a question over there, yes? You need to ask them. The, the, generally, the way I have to, I found it, like for me, I'd rather use Slate in your regular voice. I want to hear, I want to hear how you change. So I, I need to know what your skill level is in the relation. Um, because if, if it's your voice, that's fine. I just need to know. Uh, video game guys tend to like it in character. So you need to ask. And if you have to, you do what they ask you to do. Slate in character. I, I find it weird. But you have some people who came up through finance who are now running game companies. And they can't get out of it. Once they hear you, they can't think that you can sound any other way than you're sounding. And they won't listen to anybody. They just shouldn't be running game companies. Anyway. <laughs> yes. So, like, um, 
Well, it wasn't a blooper, it was an actual line in a show. And it was in Gurren Lagann. But there's an episode of Gurren Lagann that never aired. It was only in the DVD release. And it's where, uh, uh, and, and this, this character named uh, Viral traps our heroes in, a, in a, uh, an outdoor uh, bath uh, area. And the girls are on one side of a, of a block wall and the guys are on the other. And Kamina wants to see the naked girls. So he's running up and down looking for a chink in the wall, some way to look over, and he goes, Gimme, go find a wall, go find a hole! Gimme's the little boy. So he's running up and down and suddenly he looks at Simone, who's kind of the middle lane, and he's looking around and he sees Simone's butt. And we cut to the inside, and we see the finger go in the butt. <laughs> and we cut outside, and Simon goes straight up in the air, and as he goes up the top, he sees the girls. And he lands back down, and Kamina, who's played by Kyle Bear, comes running back up and says, Gimme, did, did you see, there he goes, says, uh, Simon, did you see something? He said, yeah, and he starts to hit himself, says, Gimme, quick, stick your finger on my butt. <laughs> he got it in one take. <laughs> I never got another take out of it because it was laughing too hard. <laughs> so that's the yeah, weird stuff like that. Yes, one more, and then I gotta get out of here. Where in Puerto Rico? I was born in a in a in a hospital that doesn't exist anymore in Santurce, and it's in Santurce. It's a neighborhood of San Juan. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, it's the part that I'm told now. If you go there, you'll get stabbed. It's a really bad part of town now. Apparently. Yeah. Well, it's funny. Just uh, just a quick story for that is that I, I work with a guy whose also name is Tony um, at uh, at Bang Zoom. Uh, he's about thirty years younger than I am. But uh, we were comparing notes one day. And he's Puerto Rican. I'm Puerto Rican. He was born in San Jose. I was born. We were born in the same hospital. And so we continue comparing notes. And there's about a 50-50 chance his mother was the maternity nurse that took care of me. His grandmother. His grandmother. So has that for a small world here in Burbank. <laughs> all right, so um, th thank you all for joining me. I'm hoping you have a good time. And uh, see us tomorrow. We've got a bunch of stuff out here tomorrow. And that's the booth, by the way. And uh, oh, oh the, we're giving away the, the raffle. Yeah, we're giving away a free, we're giving away one free intro to voice acting per day this week. So go down and sign up at the, at the, uh, at the voice act, at the actual voice acting booth and we'll, uh, and hopefully we'll see you at one of the classes. Thanks. Pardon? 505. It's over near Artist Alley. All right, so thank you guys. See you later. Bye. What's that? Boom, boom. See? See, uh, well, I, I don't speak it well enough to, to try it out. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm, if I'm in Puerto Rico for about a half a day, I start putting it back up. Oh, good. So I can talk to the cat. <laughs> So I'm the first one I've seen. Yeah. <laughs>